Hello guys, I'm uh, I'm doing a yeah, it's bend it. Okay. Yep. Hello guys, I'm doing up the razor and um, have my colleague over here, uh, Herdik. Um, we will be talking slightly different today about uh, telecom networks that um, are slightly different from a different perspective that has been going on lately with the uh, previous attacks and different research that has been greatly done over the years. Uh, so mainly we're talking about you know how taking over the over telecom networks. So people have seen, I believe that people have seen recently the uh, the press releases regarding how, to, how we're using SS7 and, and hacking into uh, bank accounts and the uh, latest Reddit attack and whatnot, and how the intelligence agency used it to spy on high officials and, and such attacks. But the question is, is although this is, this is, there was, was great, done, uh, great work done here, but is this the only attack vector that affects mobile networks? Actually, it's not. So that's our main focus today. We're talking about from a design perspective and how the lack of threat modeling in telecom networks could affect and impact the mobile network in general, not specifically in, in something related to the wireless interface or something specifically in the uh, protocol that's being used in a signaling network, but how we could chain the attacks. What, for example, how to use the data that is being uh, sniffed from the air interface and use that with the SS7 to achieve further attacks. So this is a bit of economics for uh, guys who are not into telecom. This, uh, these are mainly the uh, uh, nodes and uh, uh, definition that we'll be using today. So uh, SS7 is the uh, signaling protocol used for 2G and uh, for 2G voice and SMS, 2G and 3G. MME is the mobility management entity. It's responsible. It's for, it's a LTE network that is used for authentication and session initiation in, in MME. Uh, serving Gateway or SGW is responsible for creating and maintaining the data session that you guys use to uh, access uh, internet through um, for 4G. HLR is the uh, home local home local register is the main database uh, of the mobile network. Um, each user is only uh, only resides in one um, HLR. Uh, MSC we c we could say it's more or less like a big switch. So it um, it takes it, its main function is to switch and route the the, the calls and SMSs to the subscriber. Um, so a, a bunch of a lot of cells are connected to the MSC or switch. So when there is a terminating call or SMS, it passes through the switch and from the switch goes to the uh, cell that you are connected to. Uh, CRBT is the uh, caller ring back tone is the is is actually an important um, node that is connected to the core and it's connected to the charging nodes that is in mobile network. Uh, its only function is to allow you to register or subscribe into ringtone when you call instead of the normal uh, tone beeping tone. You just get any ringtone that you want. And of course, the IMSI IMSI is the um, is the main uh, subscriber identifier in a mobile network. So. We, in mobile networks, we, the nodes and the operators don't deal with MSI stands or your mobile number. That is mapped to an IMSI. That is the SIM card ID that hands all the operation of the subscriber. Now, Hardik will, will take us uh, a deeper into the uh, arch uh, an architecture and give us an illustration about architecture. And then we'll move forward with the attack vectors and um, an, an attack scenario that we drew to be able to chain up the different attack vectors together to achieve um, an, an impact by the network. Thank you, Loy. Uh, hi, guys. So, uh, talking about the high-level uh, generic diagram, architecture diagram of an operator. Uh, here, we have taken three major categories. One is uh, LTE, GSM, as well as fixed line, which is FTTH. Uh, normal data flow will uh, happen from the UE, which is uh, the 4G, uh, 3G network. From 4G, the data initiation will happen to MME. MME will forward that request to SGW. SGW will initiate the uh, data request and create a session for that particular uh, uh, user. That request will be forwarded to PGW and then uh, data access will be provided to the subscriber. Likewise, in the GSM network, which is 3G, the SGW gets uh, replaced by SGSN and PGW gets replaced by GGSN. As uh, Loy mentioned here, a particular node which we have uh, taken is uh, CRBT, which will 
further be discussed while we uh, talk about attack uh, scenarios crbt uh, how the call flow happens is the when a subscriber is calling uh, somebody b party b party will uh, would have subscribed to a vas service which is uh, not to uh, get give the caller a digital tone instead give them a ring back tone so the entry will uh, the call will go to msc msc will switch that call it will reach out to hlr hlr will look at the entry if subscriber has vas service enabled if yes it will reach out to crbt crbt will say that it has following ring tone and then uh, he will get the tone back ftth has triple play services uh, voice over ip data and ip tv all are in uh, separate vlans possible entry points from to a uh, operator's network here we have uh, have two phases one is from the external side one is from the internal side the extended part of the network even the ue devices which we have are extended part of the operator's network from the uh, ue Opera, uh, the subscriber can reach to the core network even the e node bees which are not physically monitored that well can be accessed easily on the other side we have uh, access from the internet and other interconnect points even the mvnos can get into the core of uh, the main operator going ahead with the attack vectors from each of the entry point from the mobile stations attacker can enumerate core nodes of the uh, operator and identify internal nodes which may be part of pg uh, the uh, may be part of packet core network ims data center even the corporate network and noc network uh, can be exposed to the ue devices this happens because of the network segregation issues which are uh, there in the network from the fixed line as we say, as we discussed there are triple play services running so the uh, segregation ha happen at the d slam level which is that device and the data goes out from the packet core voice over ip data uh, data goes to ims and the streaming that is ip tv data goes to the streaming services however if there is any segregation or routing flaw in the network there are chances that the request may not reach the dslam at all it may be routed just before the actual service gets hit and that routing can lead to uh, attacker gaining access inside the data center which may have devices majorly used by oss and bss which is for operations uh, business operations attacker can get access into the network operations which is knock and sock which mainly can, is used for uh, mon uh, administrating the core devices as well as can get inside the corporate network which may lead to operators domain controller being compromised by the attacker from the internet there are uh, asn blocks which are available to the attacker these are basically bgp routes which are advertised using that attacker can get access to applications and servers which are there in the dmz zone of the operator from the dmz zone if network segregation or routing is not proper attacker may end up accessing the core network of the operator likewise there are sbcs which are exposed over the internet these are mainly because of the interconnects to other operators and since sbcs are exposed attacker can go ahead and perform 
uh, SIP related attacks on these uh, SBCs, sending crafted SIP packets and gaining more information out of the network, as well as targeting a subscriber and sending out uh, packets for in such a way that subscriber gets directly impacted. Likewise, uh, there are chances to get inside data center. When when we say data center, we mean OSS BSS devices. So there are uh, nodes which monitor and control E node Bs and node Bs, node Bs, BTSs for the operator. These are at times exposed over the internet because the operations of those nodes are given to third party vendor, for example, any product uh, base firm who has deployed their nodes will have access to it. Likewise, uh, corporate network and NOC. We have uh, signaling protocols which uh, are, used, are used for interconnects between two operators. The attacks here are for, uh, in terms of getting the MZ of the subscriber and then targeting a specific subscriber. And further on this, we will talk when we uh, when we further go into attack uh, scenarios. From the uh, for the air interfaces, we have uh, we can use uh, RTL, SDR, and Osmocom phones to capture the uh, to stiff the MZs and TMZs of the subscribers. Uh, using the channels which are broadcasted by the operator. This is uh, something that we did today in the morning where we tried to stiff the broadcasted channels which are here and we could see local numbers as well as no MGs of numbers which are in roaming and uh, in roaming. Uh, and also using this uh, vector, we can locate a particular subscriber based on the cell IDs of that subscriber. Additionally, additionally, what we also observed is some of the node B sites which are here, they don't have uh, channel hopping enabled. What this means is when it is disabled, it is more it becomes more easy for the attacker to sniff the uh, packets of that particular uh, site. Uh, and if channel hopping is enabled, it will just become difficult for the attacker as he will have to keep switching the channels to get the uh, packets. So the data will remain incomplete all the time. The, there are some uh, publicly available services which will give the MZ the global titles of the MSCs and the HLRs for that particular MSI SDN. Here we can do a, uh, in, in this scenario, uh, that particular MSI SDN was in roaming. Uh, so he was roaming in Pakistan and so the serving MSC of the uh, Pakistan operator is can be seen here as well as the HLR uh, global title of the uh, of his uh, home operator can be seen. We can do a quick uh, demo of this. So we are currently sending the request. So it is sending a SRI SM request uh, for that particular MSI SDN. Yeah, this is this this um, this a, this is an API for API. HLR lookups. It's a it's already there, uh, yep. but we modified it a bit to be able to check for uh, for SMS firewalls and controls. As you see, the second one is we're checking for home routing SMS firewall. That's basically uh, the SMS firewall. It acts like a proxy in the middle. So when it receives the first request asking for the subscriber to send the SMS, it will return back a fake MZ, a randomized MZ, and a randomized address for the MSC. So some there are some 
some configurations where uh, it depends on uh, if we send two requests and we find that the answers are matching, that means there's no SMS firewall. Of course, the deployment differs, but at least for this for this specific operator, um, uh, th this worked out. And, and SM there was no SMS firewall and we'll be able to retrieve the HLR, the MSC, and his MZ. Uh, and then, of course, we could conduct further attacks. Okay. So right now he's not in the uh, in roaming. So this these are his uh, home uh, serving MSCs and attacks. Uh, so these nodes uh, are configured with uh, 3GPP uh, network dot org domain. This is uh, the realm for authentication as well as for routing. Uh, same can be uh, done by just uh, subdirectory buster and then identifying the nodes which are exposed over the internet. These nodes are part of packet core devices. Uh, these are usually uh, 4G nodes and uh, IMS nodes. So you'll you'll see uh, EPDG. You'll see PCSCF over here. And attack scenario like yeah. So, so in, in, in this, we're trying to take all of these attack attack vectors that we're talking about and to put it in a one end-to-end -end attack scenario, starting from um, how to, for example, retrieve the AMZ, uh, or for example, connecting or trying to compromise a node that has been exposed exposed to the user, up to, for example, we need to overbill the user, for example, to use the internet uh, on his account, uh, using data internet on his account, impersonate the, that we are the user, hijack his session, uh, we are using his internet, and he's being billed. So, that's uh, what we'll be uh, seeing. So, first, uh, as we mentioned before, that uh, if if you connect, if you tethered with your phone, if you use the USB dongle, you you if you made a trace route to public uh, Google DNS, you might find internal sch IP schemas. That's that's totally wrong because it the the operator by then is exposing his internal schema. Okay, so with a simple doing doing simple scans like Nmap and what you can identify the nodes, and that's what happened here. We were able to identify the CRBT node that is connected to the charging uh, nodes internally in the uh, operator, and it's connected to the core networks, which is the HLR and MSC, and uh, we were able then it was able then to compromise the CRBT because it was using a weak or a poor uh, password policy as well. It was using the defaults, mainly the defaults of the vendor. And uh, it, it, it has been taken uh, uh, that the, the vendor is using his same credentials on every node that has, has been administered. Uh, so we were able first to uh, uh, compromise the node, uh, scanning, uh, mapping the the service, getting into the uh, getting into a root shell uh, on the CRBT, and the CRBT by default because it's connected to the core, it has um, the the SS7 stack on it to be able to connect internally with the SS7. So then, what we've done is. Um, we made a script called a global title scanner. Global title is is the same as the public IPs in TCP IP network. So it's the main addressing, uh, it's how you address the nodes in core network. So the global title scanner mainly try to uh, work like a port scanner or NMAP uh, just in its uh, uh, essential phases to map which node is running on which global title. So each node in the mobile network, HLR has a specific, for example, port number, like HTTP has 80. HLR has something similar, which is uh, number six and whatever. So we were able to run the scan on, the, on a, on a, uh, on a um, uh, range of global titles and be able to identify the HLR um, or number of HLRs or the HLR that is being used. So the importance of this is if you're having the HLR, you will be able to bypass merely uh, most of the controls that are being uh, uh, provided. For example, when we saw the, the part of how we could detect SMS home routing, so if we have the address of the HLR, we will communicate with the HLR directly bypassing the SMS firewall and bypassing any signaling firewall that could be there. Uh, so this is the global title scanner we identified the HLR. Uh, it's responding. Now we will use the HLR for a more advanced uh, scenario. So we're using Sigploit, a uh, tool I've authored. The Sigploit is, is mainly uh, focusing on uh, protocol signaling uh, for 2G and uh, 3G, 4G. So 
Here, after identifying the uh, the the uh, the HLR, we we try to make a an HLR query with something called send routing info. Send routing info is a basically an SS7 message that is normally used when 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 a when an operator is trying to find or to locate a subscriber to terminate for him a call. So they're using send routing information using only the the phone number of the subscriber as a parameter, and the retrieved information afterwards is the MZ. Okay, and the, uh, the, the MSC, the HLR, and the location it could be the cell ID of, as well. So, okay, after retrieving the MZ and the MSC global title, what could be the impact? What is the next step? So, currently what we can do are enormous, enormous things. We could locate the, the subscriber. We could do SMS or call interception. Uh, we could change his profile to manipulate, uh, for example, enable call forwarding, for example. So what the MZ, as you said, the MZ is the most important identifier. So we can make impersonation. We can make data overbilling, as we will see. Uh, we can we can even retrieve. So we can even retrieve the ciphering key that is being used uh, to encrypt the, the wireless communication between mobile and the tower. So mainly there are encryption keys between uh, the mobile and the tower. So when if you if you did passive sniffing, and at the same time you were able to retrieve the session key, you were able to decrypt such capture you have. So another thing is with the MSC Global Title, of course you can do uh, dosing the MSC Global Title. Uh, then a whole region for the operator can go out, uh, make them lose a lot of money. You can do interception. You can manip manipulate the profile as we said. So after we retrieve the AMZ, what is done is that we use it to overbuild the subscriber. So what does that mean? That means is normally in the uh, in 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 uh, in using data in 4G, there is a protocol called GTP that is um, uh, used for initiation of the data uh, tunnels and initiate the data session. Okay. So initially, what happens in normal case is that. The MME node that we said initiate, initiates a create session request to the PGW, which is the gateway that takes you onto the internet. The parameter that the create session request takes is the MZ that we just retrieved from the previous attack. What we've done is we, that you create, you send the uh, create session request, simulating it from our laptop, uh, putting in the MZ of subscriber, and then we receive an IP. Okay, uh, you will just receive an IP, uh, and then you. As because of that you were uh, able to create the session with the IMSI of the subscriber, then all the uh, billing will be done on the subscriber that you hijacked as IMSI. So that was where we uh, sent the create session request. The create, we had a create set where we received the response, uh, allocating for us an IP from the network. Um, and let's, let's see a, a, a demo for this. So mainly this is a sigploit. Uh, we're using gas 7 right now to locate a target and retrieve its MZ and the MSC. We're using send routing info for SM. Send routing info for SM is used to locate the target uh, when we want to terminate an SMS for him. Uh, we're just putting in some um, uh, parameters that we could work with. So the only parameter for the user that is required, we, we, we require two things. Either we require the MSISDN, which is the phone number of the subscriber. Okay, that's that's mandatory. Optionally, to bypass the SMS firewall, we could put in the HLR global title that we retrieved from the global title scanner. So by that, if, if we inputted the, uh, put in the, we set the HLR global title, by then we could be able to bypass our control because the traffic will not pass by the SMS firewall. It will go directly to the HLR. So here we're just putting in the uh, the MSSDN of the subscriber. So yeah, to bypass, I don't know if you can see it or not, but to bypass SMS firewalls, we will set the HLR global title. We are setting our own uh, local address to to generate the traffic from, and we are running. So the stack for the protocol is being initialized.
now there has been some kind of handshake um, association and then we're sending the SRISM this is the SRISM request sent from us this is the the uh, response back we get and down there you'll see that we received the IMSI and there's the location information where we have the MSC global title uh, or the MSC address itself now with the gathered information, we will take the IMSI and generate a GTP or data related attack. Uh, we will do the overbilling uh, attack uh, using GTP version 2. So there are two versions for GTP. GTP version 1 is used in 3G, GTP version 2 is used in 4G or LTE. So it's much simpler, just put in the configuration file for, uh, for, for such attack and the target that you want to attack, which is in our case is the PGW, uh, which you want to send the address to. And then we run. I guess the oh, IP was wrong then. <laughs> so you send the request sending the response allocating for us a uh, um, an IP so the PGW acts like a DHCP server it receives the uh, request it, gen it allocates for you the, the the IP so that's that's kind what kind of a, a chain attack scenario that could be done using different attack vectors on mobile network so unfortunately mobile operators tend to focus, for example, when they listen about there is a, a vulnerability with the protocols or signaling SS7 or GTP, they run and go and buy SS signaling firewalls. Uh, but they don't look, for example, at the configuration that could be enhanced on the uh, RAN side or the access side, the wireless one, uh, how to tune the, the configuration, for example, to to reduce IMSI paging for, so the attacker will not be able to, with passive sniffing, get the IMSI. Um, so, there are best, some best, few best practices. They, these are not the whole best practice that could be done, but they are like, let's say, the main uh, best practices. The most important thing is to have net traffic segregation. A subscriber or a user, uh, a normal mobile subscriber, cannot, with using USB or tethering his mobile phone, be able to reach a domain controller, for example. That occurs because there is no segregation. There is no, for example, uh, separate MPLS clouds or separate VRFs internally that uh, for, uh, segregates the traffic of the core away from the uh, from the subscriber, uh, segregate the IT from the telecom networks. Uh, so segregation should be set. Management interfaces. When we entered the CRBT using SSH, that was a management interface exposed to the uh, the, the subscriber. So. When you have a, uh, when you integrate a new solution, the new solution should have a specific interface for activating service and you do firewalling and access list on this and you have management interfaces that is being used only for management purposes with the NOC and the OSS purpose. Um, of course, looking at the, the security peeps in the, uh, the security teams in the, uh, telecom operators should be, uh, in, should work out with the core guys or should work out with the other teams. They should have configuration reviews. They should look at the configuration. They should understand well uh, the impact of each con each configuration. Um, the nodes should be hardening. Um, they, they, there should be a, a, a good password policy that could be done. Um, they should implement, for signaling, should implement basic filtering. So you don't have to spend millions of dollars on signaling firewall. They could be hardened on the nodes itself. They can be done on the uh, the main STP of the core. Uh, the STP is like a core router that manages the routing of the mobile traffic. So you can do some basic filtering on this. Uh, you can implement monitoring. I mean, you, you, you should, you need to discover uh, uh, anomalies in the in your traffic. You start, you, you need to start thinking about the, the next step for telecom, having a telecom suck, for example, and start monitoring and, and looking at the uh, um, abnormal behaviors. Uh, of course, if possible, looking at uh, deploying a firewall, a signaling firewall, should be a more intelligent one. Um, and of course, Try to implement good and effective threat modeling uh, when you design and integrate any new solution in a telecom operator or in a mobile operator. Uh, so these are the main best practices that operator could follow to reduce uh, the attack surface and the impact uh, of such attacks that could be done and compromise on, on mobile network. Um, so 
yeah, that's that's it for, for us. If you guys have any questions. Yeah. Okay, we have uh, the time. We are way over time. We do one question. For uh, any further questions, uh, I would yeah, sure, sure. want to request we, we, we you to go people, outside yeah, and take the questions after. there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. Just a quick question. Um, to, to establish a GTP session, you need to have tunnel endpoint identifiers. You have what? I'm sorry? TEIDs. No, no, the TIDs is, um, so... So PDP so, context activation and deactivation. So I just wanted to understand how did you establish the GDP session? So a TID is normally is initiated by the destination node. So a TID is to identify each subscriber. When you, when you initiate a data session, each subscriber has his own tunnel. This tunnel is identified by TED, okay? So when you create a TED, initially it's, it's zeros. The, the, the node that assigns the TED for this tunnel is the, dis the receiving node. For example, if I'm an MME sending a request to the PGW, so the PGW assigns the TEID for me. And that's how it goes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank um, you guys. For any further questions, uh, thank you for your uh, talk. It was a great talk. Thank you.